Welcome to the Dragon Slayer podcast by East Idaho Credit Union. My name is Steven. With me, as always, is Bailey. And today's guests, we have Marcella and Taylor Kerbs. Kerbs. Yes. Kerbs. Kerbs. Okay. <laughs> I should have I should have been able to just sound that out, right? Yeah. It's not that complicated. Some people say Krebs. 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 The Krebs cycle. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, not us. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys run a uh, Bust and Moves moving company, not a dancing company. No. Not a dancing right? company. Do you have any like uh like disco balls in any of the trucks or anything? <laughs> you do no, anything like we that? don't have any disco balls and the guys are super fun. Customers love it. They yeah. always have a smile on their face. <laughs> when they pull up, but uh, no dance moves have been performed yet. Okay. Well. Successfully. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's always time. Yeah. Right? Yes. Time yeah. and training can get you to amazing places. <laughs> um, uh, then, uh, Marcella, you also run your own consulting company as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm excited to talk to you guys about both of these. It's super entrepreneurial. And that's largely what this podcast is about, is business owners who've had to slay dragons as part of their journey, right? Mm -hmm. um, everybody has these stories, and we're excited to talk to you guys about yours. Mm -hmm. So I want to start off with um, the moving company. Mm -hmm. How did this happen? <laughs> why, why, why did you decide this was the thing, and what was the process of getting it started? I'll give the long version of this. So Great. <laughs> my parents got divorced when I was about 12 years old. Oh, very long version yeah, of very, this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're going back 20 years, 22 years to be exact. And every year, uh, my mom would, we'd move into another apartment. Mm. We'd move somewhere else. And so then I'd get my friends together. We'd get our trucks together. And I, I remember, I think it was my junior year, I told my, one of my friends, we were driving the Penske truck, and I said, I'm going to have a moving company one day. <laughs> he just kind of laughed, kind of laughed. I was like, no, I'm really going to have a moving company. And then um, went to college. I, I, I got a college uh, football scholarship. Mm. And so it I could see just, that from you. Uh, yeah. Where'd you go? Yeah. Uh, Idaho State. Go yeah. Bengals. Yeah, go, go yeah. Bengals. And then I went to uh, Snow College in Utah. Mm -hmm. I saw junior college down there. And um, never thought about college. Thought about playing football. Mm -hmm. Never thought about college. So I wasn't a good college student. <laughs> Had to give up on that dream. Um, and then when Marcel and I met, we got married and I kept, we'd be down in Utah. I'd see a moving company. And I was like, Hey, we're going to have a moving company. And she <laughs> said, are you, no, like, no, we're from Idaho. <laughs> Nobody calls a moving company. You call the church, you <laughs> right, know, you get, right. you get some people to volunteer. And yeah. I said, no, we're going to do it. We're going to look like this. We're going to wear blue collars. We're going to have khakis. <laughs> yes. And so then like you're at Best Buy or yeah, something. Exactly. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. And then we, uh, just kind of gave up on that. Like, no, you got to go to college. You got to get a degree. Mm -hmm. And so I kept going to college, kept not doing good, kept spending money, um, kept spending money. And uh, finally, I just told Marcel, this is probably the first dragon we had to slay. Mm. I uh, told her, <laughs> I said, hey, like, I'm I'm starting this moving company. We were working with the SBDC and they kept giving me assignments. I'm like, I'm just starting. Like, uh, let me jump in. Okay. The, the dragon is this. The dragon was Taylor has a very big entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. I'm a first generation American. Okay. That is not mine. My <laughs> family risked their lives so that I could come here and mm. get a nice, pretty college degree and they could mm -hmm. frame it and so that I could have a career, mm -hmm. which I did. <laughs> and then when Taylor wanted to put our very, very small amount of savings, down on a moving company, <laughs> I said, I said, and I'm not proud of this, but I will say it on here. I said, once I had my teaching degree, I said, when you fall flat on your face, I will be here with my teaching degree and benefits. And I think Talk there was a hair flip. Dragon. I think there was a hair flip in there. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, you're going to do this on your own. I'm not helping you one bit. I'm, oh. I was totally against it. I, my mentality was, I don't want to work 60 hours a week. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a slave to my job. Because that's what I had. That, that in my mind, that's what entrepreneurs mm -hmm. did, business mm -hmm. owners did. I, that was not the life I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I, so Taylor's first business presentation was to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's probably that went. like a great refining moment, <laughs> really right? Yeah. yeah, because, you know, we had a small, small savings account, right. and basically it was a credit card. Um, <laughs> and so I, would, I, I needed to go buy a truck. We were going to start off, because there's some moving companies that they will just be labor companies, and they have U-Hauls. Mm. I said, that's not going to be us. We're going to take this as a business. So I need to go buy a truck. And this truck was $12,000, and I went to... A few banks, 
another mm-hmm. dragon to had to slay a few <laughs> banks. And they said, no, we're, we're not working with startups. Sorry, mm-hmm. you're not a bread and butter for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then I did go to this bank and they have a, a place in my heart. Um, I won't say it on the podcast, but they you have can. A, it's okay. A, a bank of Idaho. Bank, bank of, of Idaho. Idaho. Yeah. Hey, shout went, out to Bank of Idaho. Yeah, yeah. I went in there. And John Arbors, I told him. I was We're like, still hey, better. Yeah. But I, <laughs> yeah it's all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. um, I went in there and I talked to John and, and I showed him everything. And he said, you know what? This is crazy enough. It might just work. Mm. And then got the $12,000. We bought a truck, filled it up with equipment, um, put a Craigslist ad, $5 Craigslist <laughs> ad. And we've been busy ever since. Two weeks, That's I quit so my day crazy. job. And, wow. Yeah. yeah. Two weeks. He comes home. He's all so you know my nice Told office yeah. job <laughs> that I have? I'm not doing that anymore. Um, but it it was the biggest blessing. One of our very first um, clients was a veteran, and it, he was just amazing. He did a video for us, and it, and it just made us realize what we could do. Mm. Um, but it definitely wasn't easy. And, and here's the thing about starting a business. You are completely betting on yourself mm-hmm. every day. When you wake up in the morning, it's on you whether you're going to make it or you're going to break it. Like Mm. it is. And that's such a scary thing. Yeah. You know, but it's something I think Taylor thrives on and it's something that stresses me out. (laughs) Well, okay. So there's a lot of interesting stuff in there to unpack. Uh, On the last thing you said, I think there's something really interesting. I used to run um, like a, a couple of sales departments and when you'd hire salespeople, I found a couple of like archetypal salespeople, even if they had no experience that always tended to do well. And you'll find this interesting because there's a lot of overlap into entrepreneurs as well. Um, First one is like uh, kids off the farm, right? Because they know how to work hard. They know how to give it their all. They also know how to get yelled at. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I remember my old man and my grandpa screaming at me, get around that <laughs> cow, get around that. Right. So I get it. Um, uh, then the other one is high performing athletes. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the other, because they know how to work hard. They know how to apply themselves. They know how to be coached. They know how to make incremental improvement and they tend to do super, super well in entrepreneurial activities. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can see like the archetype coming to life right here, which is really interesting, really cool. I want to go back to the first part of your story for a minute where (laughs) you said you're crazy, essentially. (laughs) This is a terrible idea. Uh, This is not uncommon, Mm -mm. right, for an entrepreneur where you have one person who is um, maybe more risk-seeking and the other one who's very risk averse, super common. Mm -hmm. Um, Talk us through the nitty gritty. How did you work through it? So you did your presentation. I'm sure you had all kinds of interesting things to say about it. Yeah. How did you get her to say yes, finally? And how did you get to yes, finally? How she got to yes was she kept, I think what was finally was when I was like, hey, I'm at work. I can't answer phone calls. My phone's ringing. We need, because I, I had a day job. Yeah. I was like, I have to give up on this. And I, I showed her the numbers. I said, if if I miss this phone call, it costs this much mm. to not do the job. Mm-hmm. And then I made $110 at my other job. So right. I just kind of had to show her numbers. Mm. And that really spoke well with her. And then, you know, with the with the $12,000 truck one, I said, if it fails, we just sell the truck. Yeah. You know, and we'll just walk away. Yeah, you have an asset. There. We have an asset. That's right. We just walk away. So I think a couple of having an exit plan, mm-hmm. if it does fail, mm-hmm. helped her. Mm-hmm. And then showing her numbers like we are missing out on opportunities. We are missing out on money that could be made mm-hmm. for our family. And so I think for me, it was those two things, having an exit plan and then seeing the ginormous opportunity that was there. Mm. But also at the same time, at this point, I had graduated with my education degree, my bachelor's in education and my bachelor's in communication. And I was looking at what I was making and this astonishing promise of, you know, if you get a degree and you work really hard and you do all of these things, it, in my specific scenario was not working out to how I thought it was going to be. Mm. You know, I was... We were still struggling. Sure. We're still on a very tight budget. You know, Taylor had a good job. I I was teaching and I loved what I was doing. And I think, so for me, I finally realized, okay, so we tried my plan 
which was this very safe route. Right. You know, that everybody was cheering us on, sure. like, oh, you're going to college, yay. Well, that, that's what we're right. taught right. our uh, whole lives is yes. go the safe conservative route on yes. this stuff. And yeah. people are so stoked for you when you are going to college. But if you tell people that you're starting a business, they look at you like you're crazy. Yeah, they do. Okay. Which is so funny, right? And it's so backwards. It's so backwards. Um, and so I got to the point where I was like, okay, we tried my thing and I'm here and it's just not going to work out for our yeah. family. It's yeah. just not. So I guess let's try yours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things that I've always been inspired with when we have guests on this podcast is, is this kind of juxtaposition where they followed the rules mm -hmm. and they're like, actually, it kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, it's not that great. Right. And so many people just say, well, that's life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm always so impressed with people who say, no, I don't, I don't care for this. I'm going to be something different. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's inspiring. It's really cool to watch, actually. So that's really neat. Yeah. yeah. Um, and my whole life, everyone was just, oh, you know, great potential, great potential. Mm -hmm. And I just never felt like I ever satisfied that. And even mm -hmm. with this, I feel like Marcelo was just like, you know, Taylor does a lot of great things, but he doesn't always necessarily finish great things. Mm. And so that's what made her nervous too. And, you know, it's just, but. Because I know, I mean, I think anybody who meets Taylor or is in contact with Taylor, it, it just experiences Taylor, they know that he has a presence. And I've I, experienced that. You've, yeah. you've experienced Taylor. <laughs> um, he has a presence. He really does. And that presence has taken him, you know, to certain opportunities and, and whatnot, but it was that complete follow through mm -hmm. that, you know, some unfortunate things happened that he wasn't able to do that follow through when mm -hmm. it came to things like, you know, football didn't end like he wanted to, mm -hmm. you know, school didn't end like he wanted it to. And so here we were on again, this like, uh Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Like, is it going to end like we wanted it to? And I think what this has been, it's been like a redemption that it has. I mean, we're far from being right. done. Sure. But what he has built, the culture with his guys, we've been in business for four years. We have employees that have been with us for three of those four wow. years. Four, you know what I mean? Four guys have been with us for three crazy. years. Crazy. And yeah, they're, and they're crazy. amazing guys and they're leaders in our company and they they bet on us mm -hmm. that what we were doing was going to work, that this idea of hiring movers in Idaho, like what? You're not going to roll up your sleeves and do it yourself. What's wrong with you? You know, or you're not going to call the church. Why would you pay for movers? We had to bring that awareness yeah. to Pocatello, Idaho, which is yeah. where we started. Mm -hmm. um, and that was people would be like a moving company, you know, why? And we're like, why not? Like, it, and I love this, uh, this little thing that Taylor does when he meets people, when people ask us, well, why did you start a moving company? So. Yeah. So I always put them through this little activity. I mm -hmm. say, okay, let's think about your dream home. Picture it. How many bedrooms, how many levels, square footage. Yeah. And then they're kind of all happy. And then they, I say, okay, now think about your current home and everything that's inside of it. Now you got to put that stuff in the dream home, and mm. everyone goes, "Oh, yeah, yeah." <laughs> so I'm like, that's exactly why we started a moving company. Yeah. It, moving sucks. Yeah. It really does. Yeah, it does. It's not easy. Um, and every time the guys get done with the job, they're smiling, they're laughing, <laughs> they're having fun. And guess what? They're doing the next day. Mm. Next day, they're moving somebody else. Mm. The very next day, at seven a.m. Mm. So it's it, it, it. Moving can suck, but if you hire Bustin Moves, it will not suck. It will not suck. Yeah, yeah I. I believe it. Look, I, I, I've hired moving companies twice in my life mm -hmm. and worth every yep. penny to do it, yep. to be really honest. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it removes all the stress from the experience, all the just awfulness, the fighting with your wife, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. the whole thing. Yeah. Like you just, I mean, to have like, when we moved up here, we had these guys, you know, pack up our house in Texas and and put it in a truck and my wife and I just sat there yeah. and it was amazing. Yes. It yeah. was awesome. It really yeah. is. That's, yeah. that's the whole journey of it. Hey, I want to ask this cause this is super interesting. Um, you talked about prior to the moving company, mm -hmm. maybe things not finishing the way you wanted them to, um, maybe little failures that happened along the way. And you have this sort of rebirth experience a little bit. I don't think this is actually talked about enough. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs, have a, like a list of failures mm -hmm. before they ever hit on the thing that works well mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. Can you go into a little more detail on like the failures that ultimately built you into the person that could start this successfully? Get deep, Taylor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, no crying. No crying. No, no, I, I, I probably could. Um, I just knew 
like I come from, you know, my mom being a single mom and everything. I, and I never felt the pressure to take care of her. My mm. mom's a hard work, working gal, mm. but I knew I wanted to do something big. Mm. I knew I wanted to follow through with something. You know, I, I, I got a football scholarship out of high school. No one in my family went to college, mm. so they didn't know what to expect there. And I, my first semester, I signed up with uh, English, math, and made the most hardest schedule I could ever make because I just figured that's what you did and so <laughs> I just kind of started off on a bad foot and then so I stopped there and didn't know what to do I I didn't know where to go with my life and then I was like you know I I am a a, a member of the, the very prominent church in this area mm -hmm. and I was like well maybe I'll go on a mission you know maybe that's what I'll do I'll figure things out got real close didn't end up going you know and so once again just deep depression like mm. what the heck like I feel like I'm I, I feel like I'm a good person. I feel like I, you know, make people happy and, and, and are, you know, I'm very kind to people. So when Marcel and I met, I was just mowing lawns at the time. And I, <laughs> I, I always say like how you, we must've been blinded seriously, how, <laughs> how we met. Um, I mean, I guess that's the, the, the secret is my wife. My mm. wife brought something out in me that I knew I wasn't going to fail. I knew we were going to have the life that we have. So I, I just having a good support, <laughs> good support system by saying you're going to fail <laughs> and then not fail. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know if that answers no, your question. Yeah. Um, but Marcella really, and, and, and opening up a beast in Marcella, like, you know, she never wanted to have a business, mm. go to go to work, get a paycheck. And then now her business mind is incredible. And mm. we're like, how can we share this knowledge? And that's when mm. the consulting came into play. But I just think having a good person to bring the best out of me, yeah. you know, because I, I knew it. But even when we were about to start, my grandma pulled Marcella aside <laughs> and was like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> Absolutely uh, not. <laughs> yeah, are, you, are you sure he, sh he should do this? So even within my own family, my mom's such a support. No matter what we want to do, yeah. my mom's like, yes, do it. Yeah. Go for it. I'm still telling her to open up a bakery. She's 65 <laughs> years old and she's like, no, I think but we're... very, very supportive. My mom is, but it just, just having Marcel in my corner is I think finally switch mm. that just kind of switched it over for me but i think like even when people would come up to me and be like hey are you sure or whatever i was not going to let them know how terrified i was i was like <laughs> absolutely his idea is fabulous <laughs> um but at home you know at home i i'm i'm like the i'm very analytical and completely unorganized but I would tell Taylor where's this I think that's like the teacher in mm -hmm. me like turn in your assignments you know how much you're gonna make what if it doesn't work out what's gonna be your sales how are you gonna get leads how are you gonna market <laughs> we don't have money how are we gonna do this organically <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. you know so yeah. all these things started popping into my head because Taylor's moving experience I mean he worked for a furniture company so he moved like furniture ago, yeah. 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 yeah but but moving in day in and day out and doing it correctly mm -hmm. without breaking anything mm -hmm. which i'm sure you know all about mm -hmm. if you moved from you know states mm -hmm. um takes a lot of talent and care and effort and he completely mastered that when he was in the truck and he was able to pass that on and i think that care and that um wanting to make our customers happy like truly not just wanting to make the sale mm -hmm. not just wanting to get a five-star review but like truly having people be like oh this experience was amazing. That care Taylor has been able to pass on to our, our team. Mm. I mean, I don't even like calling them our employees, our team. And that's yeah. why when I talk, when I emailed you guys, I'm like, we have the best mm -hmm. team. Um, and I think that's why Busted Moves has been so successful because everybody knows moving is the top three biggest stressor in people's lives. And the first one is like a death and the second one's divorce. So that's how stressful it is. You know what I well, mean? Usually moving follows both of those. Yeah, yeah. this is true. This is true. So, so being there, being there on that day, we have such an amazing opportunity to turn these people's day around. Their experience with moving maybe before in the past might have not been great. We're going to make it amazing. Mm. We had a team meeting and one of the guys said, we're just kind of just talking about our culture and everything. He goes, you know, our job is to make them smile. Hmm. We just happen to be moving furniture oh, at the man, same time. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And it just for him to to come up with that. And that's our motto. Yeah. yeah. You know, our goal is to make you happy and smile. We just happen to be moving furniture yeah. to do that. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, 
you guys hit on a principle that I think is really, really important. And a lot of entrepreneurs, I think, forget about. Um, they tend to surround themselves with people who, who will cheerlead them on everything, which is good. You need some of yeah. that, right? You also need somebody to say, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? The way I've always called it is you have your your chief optimism officer. Mm -hmm. You need that person. Uh, then you need your chief pessimism officer mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. Um, and they play both play super important roles. And uh, having that built in here is, is awesome, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have the person who's going to make sure all the details are figured out and right. And mm -hmm. uh, then you have the person that says, let's just push through, yeah. right? Like yeah. it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of entrepreneurs will make the mistake of, of just, you know, surrounding themselves with people who say, yeah, it's going to mm -hmm. be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When sometimes there's a mess yeah. that you got to figure out. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And so uh, you, you got to have the person who doesn't necessarily doubt, but is willing to poke holes in things and look for the flaws and work on correcting them. Yeah. Right. And Super I think important. that, I think that <laughs> for any entrepreneurs out there, and I think the most common partnership in entrepreneurship is husband and Probably, wife, yeah. you know, yeah. so if you work with your husband and your wife, you know, the, first of all, you are a unicorn. If you work with him and, and if you've made it through. Yeah, I was about to say, the divorce rate has to be <laughs> yeah. like Very astronomically high. high for these people. <laughs> um, but, but it does bring a, there's a very special connection, I think. And there is a focus and a mission that we have that goes beyond just like hanging out or going on a date, you know. And and uh, Taylor and I went, I think it was to like a burger place one time. And we were just sitting there and eating. And we had like all of these amazing business ideas. <laughs> but at the same time, we've had meetings where, you know, I walk out and I'm like, I need to get out of this room because <laughs> I'm going to throw something. <laughs> so I, I think finding – um boundaries mm. you know i'm in charge of x y and z and if i fall short you're gonna come down on me and you're in charge of one two three and if right. you fall short you better believe i'm gonna come down on you <laughs> <laughs> that's a given so i think finding that balance and um making sure what role you know yeah. the one and the other is is so crucial when you're working with your spouse and respecting the time when the work day is over is something yeah. that we've had to learn because i like to come from like this department is here and this department's open from eight to 12 and then now i'm a mom and i i'm not thinking about work and taylor's mind never stops and so he'll be like yeah. hey you know what really cool giveaway we should give like at dinner time i'm all no no and i don't want to <laughs> like, know about it, down, it. We're not talking about <laughs> yeah. it yeah but the, i think that's something that we've also learned with um being married and and owning our businesses mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i was <laughs> talking to my boss one time my boss is the ceo and uh, we were actually talking about like family members and spouses mm -hmm. working in the same organization. And I told him, I was like, yeah, if my wife worked here, I'd be in your office every day telling you to fire her. <laughs> <laughs> Going to HR and be like, I, right. she, I don't trust this I don't gal. Tr mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. She's <laughs> trouble. She gave me a look. I don't appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's goodness. Great. Okay. So the movie company is doing great. Tell us about how did you parlay that into the consulting company? At East Idaho Credit Union, we're changing the future of business with our Velocity Money Market account. You can receive unbeatable returns on tiered interest rates. We have rates up to 2.02% annual percentage yield. East Idaho Credit Union puts local businesses first because when you do better, we all do better. Federally insured by the NCUA. The movie company is doing great. Tell mm -hmm. us about how did you parlay that into the consulting company? Yeah, so there's a little, you know, how you talked to Taylor about like, I don't want to call this a failure, but I, in my book it is just because I, I wish I would have seen it through better. So I told Taylor that I didn't believe in him when he started <laughs> the moving company. And for me, it felt so foreign to take any kind of credit. Therefore, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. though even, even though once I, you know, helped with things and developed sales and did all of that, I just felt so inappropriate for me to take uh, credit for for anything, because if it was for me, we would not have this moving company. Mm -hmm. um, so I felt like I had to go out there and prove it to myself that I could do this on my own. Mm. So I started looking and I noticed that Pocatello had a really big need for a cleaning, a residential cleaning company. Oh, okay, yeah. We have commercial, but residential. 
So I did a little market research. I set up my processes, my procedures, my core mission, like my mission statement, my core values, the hiring process. I set everything up before I opened my doors. And I opened my business. It was called Made to Shine. Mm, love it. Yeah, I loved it. We had six employees. We had two office gals. We had our cars. They had like these cute little maids on it. And we had like 98 reoccurring customers, including, wow. including weekly, biweekly, monthly customers. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. It was amazing. And that within our first uh, eight months, we hit six figures. And Ooh. I was just like... Sweet. That's top line revenue. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And I was just like, this is, um, I did it, mm -hmm. but then I did it. And mm -hmm. then I didn't have a reason to continue mm. because I, I had only seen it as far enough to prove it to myself that I could also do this. Mm. Therefore I deserved the credit from over <laughs> here. <laughs> and, and, and that's just how my mind works. Yeah, you know what I mean? And so I did it. And then I was just like, I'm done. Oh, I'm okay. done doing it. And so I ended up closing my doors, but I was like, well, I'm really good at starting new business, this thing. <laughs> so then I decided to take everything that I've learned and apply it to consulting mm -hmm. because I don't want anyone working 60 hours a week. I don't want entrepreneurs working 30 hours a week. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think like once you narrow down your systems and you systemize everything and you create systems and follow-ups and processes – you should be there to move the needle forward and put the right people in the position for you. Right. That's it. Right. Yeah. yeah. But that, that's a hard concept to get yeah. behind sometimes. So how would somebody engage you in your consulting business? Yeah. So uh, I put out all my information and tips and tricks and different things on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So it's Marcella Curbs Consulting on Instagram. And there's a lot of information out there. Sometimes Taylor's like, stop telling them those things. They should have to pay for that. <laughs> but... But yeah, so so that that's what we've what I've done, and and Taylor <laughs> Taylor is a very support anything I do, anything I want to do. Yes. He's like, yeah, do it. You should do it. He's and the I'm like, chief optimism it, yeah. officer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, sometimes yeah. you should be like, no, <laughs> you shouldn't do it. Well, it was about two years ago. We decided like, I'm I'm going to be out of the truck in three summers. That that was mm -hmm. my goal. I because I'm not going to be the entrepreneur that is an owner operator. Right. I don't I don't I don't believe in that. Um, so I told her in three summers, I'm going to be out of the truck. And so we knew at that time we had to be a process driven company yeah. and not a people driven company, right. you know? Yeah. And so at the time we were, we call it the perfect move. Mm -hmm. So now the movers know exactly what to do right when they, at the uh, customer's house, they know exactly what to do from the moment that they uh, arrive to the very end of the day. So we just started just going into all these processes and, and I haven't talked to a customer in three years i don't wow think. Yeah. yeah yeah we have a sales um sales department they do that and then the the ops manager he gets the guys out and then i get to i get to do the fun stuff i get to talk you know about yeah. growth and and yeah. ask the guys hey how's it going you know i see you got a new car exciting mm -hmm. you know i get to do the fun stuff mm -hmm. um and that's open been, up new locations yeah open up new locations mm -hmm. yeah so go one, on podcast go on yes. podcast yes. in the middle yep. of the day yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it we just knew what we wanted mm -hmm. out of bust and moves i want people to come work for bust and moves and create a career mm -hmm. out of bust and moves mm -hmm. i don't want you to just come during the summer um, I want you to buy homes. I always say we have three kids, but Bust and Moves has thirteen kids, mm. and every decision I make affects those right. those kids with what what houses over their head, yep. what foods in their belly. So we knew that we had to be process driven, yeah, and that kind of sparked the interest too for your yeah consulting. for consulting. And I think like talking about uh, slaying dragons. It, Bust and Moves has been in business for a little over four years. And then that very short period of time, we have learned very big lessons that have put us on a very focused track. So when we first started, we had a couple of competitors, specifically in Pocatello, because mm -hmm. that's where we started. Um, and then I'll let you take And you there. destroyed them. <laughs> no. Gone. <laughs> we did have some motivation. <laughs> so... <laughs> Competition is good. Yeah. I believe in competition. Yeah. The people, the customers, the the community um, benefits from sure. good competition. And so we didn't have a good friendship with the probably the next biggest mm -hmm. moving company. Well, he was the biggest moving company in town. And uh, I remember one day I get a call from Workman's Comp and they're like, hey, do you know uh, so-and-so? And I was like, I do know him, but he works at ICCU. He wouldn't be applying for a job. Oh. 
And she's like, okay, well, I called that number back and it said, blah, 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 moving. And so she hung up. So she's like, hey, your workman comp number, you need to have this, this, and this. So all he did was made us better. I was like, okay, let's start doing that. Mm. Because let's be real. When you start a business, no one's going to give you a handbook Uh to be like, and this is step one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, And so I was like, okay, perfect. Let's start going with that. So, um, and then another thing we, we, we. In the moving industry, there's a lot of regulations to go oh, across okay. state lines. A lot of regulations, not so much in Idaho. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we had our DOT number, we had our MC number, and I'm like, we're good. We can go across state lines. Made a couple of Facebook posts. Well, then I get a call from a DOT agent. Mm. Hey, we need to do a audit. Okay. Yeah. And then fun. she how fun? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And she's like, we need to do an audit, and I was like, okay. Well, she's like, someone turned you in, and and she told me she's like, I can't tell you who, but it wasn't a police officer and it wasn't a customer. Okay. So I'm like, okay, that narrows so it down. That pretty, narrow, pretty good guess. Yeah, that yeah. narrows it down. So she came in, and and I was like, hey, while you're here, I want to pick your brain. You yeah. Know, this is going to cost me a fine. So yeah. I might as well get yeah, something. Yeah. Might as well. Yeah. I was like, what are we missing? And she said, well, you need this tariff. You need this liability, yeah. this, this. And I said, but if we just move in state, do we need it? She said, no. I said, okay, cancel all my numbers. We're mm. just going to move in state. Mm. And ever since then, we've done over probably 2,500 moves just within the state of Idaho mm. since then. And we are so much better off. The guys are the guys are home every night, yeah, yeah. you know? And so like our, and then, and then it made me look inside and said, I'm not going to call and tell on your business. I want to destroy your business yeah. now. And, and I, I'm sorry. I, I, I always tell Marcel, I'm like, I'm the Michael Jordan of, of small businesses. <laughs> okay. I find a motivation and then I'm going to destroy you within the realms. Legal of, means. Yeah. yeah, within the realms of business. I'm like, sure. you know, you almost took food from my family. Right. So yeah. so here we go. And it just, it we are so solid now with mm. everything. So that competition was... In a way, is good for it. I, I think it's a great lesson, actually. Like, if you're in an industry where you're regulated mm-hmm. by the government, which is a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of us that, I mean, obviously, the credit union is highly regulated, yeah. right? And so we're dealing with, um, you know, uh, Department of Finance and auditors and stuff multiple times a year. That's mm-hmm. just a normal part of our procedure. But you, you did it exactly right, where you took the time to actually talk to the agent right. and learn things and they're actually fantastic resources. They really are. Um, mm-hmm. Call them, talk yeah. to them. They actually are like really open to like, if you call them, you're like, can I do this? Yeah. And they're like so thrilled that you called and talked yeah. to them about it. So she, even at great the end advice. of it, the agent was like, you know, I wish we would have met under better circumstances, right, right, but yeah. you know, we, cause we did, we, we talked for three, four or five days. We built a little, right. you know, rapport. W- rapport and so, yeah, we actually at the credit union, we did this this promotion where we were giving away like a freezer with a half a cow in it, right? Uh-huh. And, you know, we didn't think anything of it. We had like a food handler's license yeah. and stuff because we did some other events. And anyway, we get a call from the health department and they're like, hey, we saw an ad for this thing. Uh, we need to come and check out what right. you're doing there. Thankfully, it was all above board. Sure. We were super, super cautious about it and it was all handled perfectly but um while the guy was in doing the inspection i sat and talked to him for you know just in my office for Mm -hmm. like an hour yeah Yeah. just about different stuff and it was super educational and he was really helpful and um that stuff's valuable those resources i don't think people think about that they're out there they're not trying to get you no they're really not i I mean they're really not they really want to inform you because they don't want to have to come get you they don't want to be the bad guys no they don't have like a quota for how many people they can bust it's nothing like that yeah yeah. So, yeah. so to, to us, because, you know, if you look in the moving industry, a lot of people think that when you think of a moving company, you think of a moving company that moves from out of state or, you know, different things like that. And there is a lot of money to be made there. But uh, we always like to talk about um, people like to talk about revenue because it's revenue. sexy. Sure oh, uh, you know, this is the revenue. Yeah. Yeah. But once you talk about like gross profit, net profit. Oh, that's no, we when, don't want to talk about no, that. No, 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 yeah. no. Not, <laughs> that's too private. How dare you? An appropriate question. You know, and so we always wanted to make sure that that our percentages were right, that our margins were good, because if that's good, we could give out bonuses. We can give out, um, you know, our guys can make more money. You know, we have guys who have company vehicles. We want to treat our people right. So we have to make sure that our numbers are right. And going out of state for us, mm. ugh, you yeah. lose a lot of money there. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. to go back on about regulations, I wish the government would work with startups. Mm. Give them a five-year 
training program mm-hmm. almost being like, Hey, you know, you filed this report, you, that wasn't correct. We need to see this. Mm-hmm. I always thought, because we had no idea. I didn't know about workman's comp. I didn't know about, sure. you know, any of these things. So I, I, I wish that the government would work alongside yeah. or give a little leeway for the first yeah. couple of years and, and educate. And, yeah. and, Something has been really interesting for us at the credit union. We deal with a lot of small businesses. I'll plug real quick. We have the whole program around small businesses and, you know, really sp- specific loans for small businesses if they need a piece of equipment or whatever. And one of the other things that we do that I really like is we also teach them and we train mm-hmm. them. And mm-hmm. you've got some experts in the building, right, that can talk to you about a balance sheet, that can talk to you about a P&L, that can teach you how to market and get more customers and things like that. A lot of entrepreneurs start with a skill, yes. but not with right. the full yep. understanding of how to run the business. Mm-hmm. And that's something that we try to do at the credit union is really give them like some crutches to help them, yeah. you know, fill in some gaps. They may not be great, you know, marketers. Mm-hmm. We can help teach them right. how to be great marketers. Right. Yeah. Because I think that a lot of people, anybody, anybody could, you know, make a statement today like Michael Scott, I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> you could say I want to start a business it's not hard to start but it's extremely hard to run sure you know and so i think that that's what makes a difference for so many entrepreneurs like you said they have a skill Mm -hmm. and they're like let's make money off of the skill but that skill later includes employees right and culture and meetings which is a totally different set of skills absolutely Mm -hmm. and they're like wait i'm a mechanic (laughs) i want to work on cars i don't want to have to do payroll you know or all those different things and so it, it's 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 constant learning. I mean, right before we got here, Taylor is part of a mastermind and he's on a Zoom call while he's driving over <laughs> here. And that's one thing that I love about entrepreneurship is that I'm forever a student. Mm-hmm. You know, there's mm-hmm. always different ways to do it, um, especially with like th- putting things on social media and like Google my business and different <laughs> things like that. Like you're always, always learning. Yeah. And I love that. There's this uh, there's this quote. I forget his name now. Gosh, I'm going to kick myself. But he's a famous violinist mm-hmm. and world renowned, very, very famous, very, very accomplished. And he's like 93 or something. Mm-hmm. And um, he's retired and his career's over pretty much and everything. But uh, he's like practicing the violin. Mm-hmm. And he's in his 90s and his like caretaker is like, why are you practicing? And he responds, well, I'm starting to make progress. Mm. Yeah. Right. Which that's one of the reasons he was great is because he never, in his own view he mm-hmm. never arrived right. Mm-hmm. right and so he just kept going and going and going it's so easy for people to want to plateau yes and uh you're exactly right you can't ever stop you can't ever stop being a student you can't mm-hmm. ever stop sharpening well and i yeah. think people get things mixed up when you know be grateful for what you have but yeah. never be satisfied yeah that's mm-hmm. right you know what i mean yeah. you, we should be grateful for where yeah. we are but that whole plateau is that's a real that's a real thing. And so it's dangerous, dangerous. Yes. yes. Yeah. And I'm a big believer is uh, surrounding yourself with people who know more than you. Yeah. I hope to be the dumbest one of my friends. <laughs> that means I'm right. in good company. That's you know, right. They're not, yeah. They might not get anything from me, yeah. but from the beginning, when, um, when we hired somebody, he's like, I have moving spirit experience in this and that. I'm like, perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, cause I don't, mm-hmm. I, I started a business, but I don't have moving experience. Mm-hmm. I believe in filling a team that know more than you. Yeah. And it is okay. It is okay that they know more than mm-hmm. you because what I'm good at is building a business. What mm-hmm. he's good at is training and moving, mm-hmm. you know, and just surround yourself with people. Yeah. So what kind of advice would you, clearly you guys are really, really into the cultural, the employee mm-hmm. side of, of your business. And it's a critical piece to what mm-hmm. you do. What kind of advice would you give to somebody who's just starting to build a team How do you evaluate for the right fit? How do you find the right technical fit, the right cultural fit? Like, how do you go through that process? Cultural fit, you have to start it with a small group. You know, as a startup, you just have a small group. And then they get to teach it to the next people. But um, one of the things was like, hey, you guys have any friends that are looking for jobs? Mm -hmm. So then they're like, okay, I like this guy. You Mm -hmm. know, we like going to work with these guys. Um. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's so funny. We've met with like other people with business and different things like that. And Taylor, they're always like, what's your secret sauce? What's your secret sauce? And when it comes to culture, Taylor really has it. I think that creating culture you have to be a leader. And and if you're not a leader, you have to read a book or listen to a podcast. <laughs> you have to become a leader. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Because people want to be led. They want to feel like they have yeah. a purpose. And I think with Busted Moves, the purpose is to 
make our customers happy and move everything out of the house. It's a very accomplished, something that you can mm-hmm. see physically. Um, well, now when Taylor was in the truck at the at first, he got to show him how he did it, pass it on to that small crew, which because we, you know, do team meetings and and reward them and, and you know, coach them through difficult things because they're not going to be great at everything. They've stayed with us and they've continued to pass on the knowledge that Taylor gave them three years ago. And all we do with our meetings is we just give them little reminders. Hey, don't forget to say this at the mm. end. It's just a reminders. Catch the problem before it happens. And with your question, what, you know, everyone when they're starting a business, they're like, well, if I train somebody they might start their own business. Mm. And I I came across this quote and it said, what if you train your employee and he leaves you? Mm. But what if you don't train them and they stay? Right. Yeah. You know, I think that's a Richard Branson. Yeah. 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 But cause that's dangerous. If you're, if you're holding back information from your team, that's dangerous, Mm. you know? And if, if they go out and start another business, that's okay. Yeah. It, it really is okay because, it, but if they're going to stay within, they need to know everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've always said that with people who work for me, if they go on to bigger and better things, that's a success story for yeah. me, right? Absolutely. Like that's, that means that they got something out of the experience with me and they're able to grow their own life and career. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's great. I'm happy. For yeah. You. And I always tell the guys too, I'm like, you know, I don't expect all of you to want to work here forever. Yeah. But when you come out of Bust Moves, I want you to become a better man. I want mm-hmm. you to become a better person, more on time. You know, know the value of being on time. Know the value of just customers and mm-hmm. and, and customer. We don't call it customer service because we kind of feel like that's a negative. Mm-hmm. Customer experience. Mm-hmm. We're really big on giving the great customer experience. So I always want the guys to come out better people mm-hmm. yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Okay. I, I want to ask about this as well because you alluded to really good at like some of the process and some Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, um, and maybe we pull from your like Instagram a little bit here, but, but like what kind of advice would you give to maybe a starting entrepreneur Mm -hmm. or somebody who's getting ready to start Mm -hmm. on how to not just like throw people at a problem Mm -hmm. and how to really use a system to make things flow smoother? I think that a lot of times people feel like they're behind because they haven't started, Mm -hmm. which actually is, like the biggest misconception, you are so better off to start on the right foot than to have already started and be tripping and falling already (laughs) because you have people who are already counting on you, right? So if you are wanting to start your own business, map it out. The first thing that I did with Made to Shine, and we've done it with Bust and Moves, is who is your, make your business a person, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So for example, Bust and Moves is an all-American athlete like all right it. he Head, is the quarterback he's the <laughs> yeah. quarterback of the team mm. he was raised right by his, by his mama he says <laughs> yes ma'am and no sir okay yeah. so that's who he is so when you think of those characteristics immediately you have an image in your head create a person who is your business and act accordingly you know, so you can name her. So for Made to Shine, she was Stacy, and she was your best friend and she was going to check on you and she was going to make sure that your house looked great. She was never going to judge you for it because our main client was moms. Mm. As moms, we feel very judged if we're like, oh, I can't handle the housework, right? So Stacy would come over and clean our house. So whenever we made a decision, we're like, would Stacy do this, <laughs> right? And so I say create a business avatar and give them characteristics that mm. you want within your business. Mm-hmm. Number one thing. And then hire people who exude those oh, characteristics right very interesting. and then based off of like if you're in a tough situation and you have a customer service complaint and they're really mad how would stacy mm. who is so nice who is so sweet but who is proud of her work handle this situation mm-hmm. you're always able to go back to this business avatar because i think saying oh start off with your mission statement and core values that sounds so boring to people <laughs> but if nobody I, actually cares no nobody yeah. cares yeah. but they're so important because whenever i would have <laughs> i know because uh, i've been one of these people who was hired by a company and that first day they went over their course their mission statement their core values and i was day three i'm like yeah i don't know any of these <laughs> right yeah. but so i had to like remind my employees remember we're stacy mm-hmm. this is who she is and so it just made it easier that would be my first thing. My next thing would be like, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you are going to come across a million problems your first month, mm-hmm. year, whatever. 
write the solutions down to each uh, one of those problems and never have to solve those problems again oh, because they're so written. Yeah. They're already created and yeah. you're done. And then that way, when you go on to hire your first hire, here you yep. here's here's yep. the Bible to our business. Right. Follow it when something comes up. Yeah. And I, and I, and I think that <laughs> I hate the word systematizing your business because it sounds <laughs> like a college it course. So it sounds yeah, so boring. and complicated. Yeah. And difficult. All it is, it's written down solutions for your business. Mm. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. That's systematizing. We have systems. The way you brush your teeth, that's a system. The way you wash your hair, that's a system. A good system is documented. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I just oh, got my advice. office manager a little pocketbook. Yeah. I said, if any problems come up, write it down. Yeah. And then let's create a, a, a solution for it. So then we only have to do it one time. I love that's it. Amazing. You know, just, yeah. just address it one time. <laughs> yeah. So. It's such an interesting way of thinking about it. I've, I, you know, it, I don't think <laughs> this will sound really funny. I, so I got to know years ago a guy named uh, Fraser Bullock, and he did. Um, I don't know what his actual title was, but when the Olympics were in Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. uh, he did like all the operations. He was like the COO for the Salt Lake City Olympics or mm -hmm. something like that. Worked for Mitt Romney, and mm -hmm. it was right. you know, brilliant man, brilliant, brilliant man. And um, operations is not necessarily my thing. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, my brain doesn't work super, super well in that. So sitting down with him and talking to him about systematizing your business, yeah. it, like he would put me to sleep. Yes. <laughs> it was so more, he was brilliant, yeah. right? And as long as I could stay awake, I was like, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I fall asleep. But I, I like what you talked about because it's so easy to get your head around yeah. if that's not necessarily your skill set. Absolutely. Right? And, yeah. and, I, and I think that's business can be very boring. Uh, we've all taken a business class that we've probably all flunked out of, right? But business is a living, breathing mm -hmm. thing that doesn't have to be boring. Yeah. Make it work for you. You know, you are the entrepreneur. You get to decide how you are going to systemize your business. You don't have to use the word Systems and operations. Mm. You, know, you don't have to use those words. You know, you can use like uh, with busted moves. We have our sales bible. You the know, it's bible. not like yeah. systematize blah 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 blah. Like this is what it is, and the it's very strict. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah, have yeah, to be yeah, boring. Yeah. And whenever we hire salespeople, we're like, here you go. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's done. And and I think for entrepreneurs, that's the hardest thing. We are constantly redoing things that we've already done. You're trying to go so fast mm -hmm. that you you don't stop to document it. You don't stop to like learn the lessons sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Well, how many times have you made the same decision? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. like. They might ask me, oh, do we do this safe? Well, not today. Okay. They asked me two weeks later. Ah, sure. We're slow. Let's do it. Right. There's no consistency with that answer. Right. You know, so that's why, okay, no, we don't do single item moves. No, black and white. And, well, and then you mm -hmm. end up being the bottleneck of the yeah. business. And then mm -hmm. what's the point of having employees if they're driving you nuts that's, and they don't yeah. know what they're doing? This is exactly right. You know, and, and I think right now with how the labor force is and unemployment and all of that and all these openings for jobs, it makes it really hard. And a lot of people are like, uh, I just, my employees are no good, you know, or I, I can't train them. Mm, mm -hmm. No, it's not that you don't, it's not, you can't train them is you don't trust yourself to mm -hmm. train them. Everything in your business is your fault, the good and the bad. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so if an employee is bad, why is he there? And it's a fair question. Well, and there's a yeah. law of life. It's called Gilbert's law. And it's uh, about the mo employees are the most frustrated yeah. when they don't know what to do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So they, they're not going to like their job if they don't know what to do. Yeah. And, and to kind of go off an entrepreneur, first thing that I would do if you're starting off is figure out how to replace yourself mm -hmm. and then put a different hat on, mm -hmm. you know, put somebody in that place with that, with those processes, mm -hmm. put a different hat on hire somebody else, mm -hmm. you know, get them trained up. And so every, you always have to replace yourself. And my goal was when people thought of bus moves, I didn't want them to think Taylor Marcella. Right. Yeah. I want them to think, yeah. I, I kind of like that people don't even know yeah. we own bus and sure. moves, you know, I want, I, cause I want you to hire bus and moves for bus and moves yeah, for, for its quality, own merit, for yeah. its own merit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like who owns Coca-Cola right now? Who owns Pepsi right now? I don't know, mm -hmm. but I love Coke and I love <laughs> Pepsi. You know what I mean? And but, Dr. Pepper. And the, and, <laughs> yeah. And so Mr. Pib or, or, or Mr. Pib, I yeah, guess. Which is weird, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's super, I love this so much because, um, 
golly, I'm trying to think of the right way to express this story, but um, I think it's so easy for us to um, like want to centralize decision making. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like when you're the head of the org or the company or whatever, you want to be the one making the call, but it's dangerous too, yeah, yeah. right? Because of the bottleneck that you talk about. I have a lot of friends that are in um, in the military or have been in the military. And one of the things that they do really, really well in the military is they decentralize decision-making, yeah. yes. right? And so like each little group on a battlefield knows the objective is X, mm -hmm. but how you get to X is kind of your decision-making, mm -hmm. right? And... Um, they do that particularly well, and you're right. You never see employees more frustrated yeah. when they just don't know the answer to how they get to X, yep. you know? Absolutely. Really interesting. I was going to tell a more in-depth story, but I was like, well, that might be a little much for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely yeah. not. I think uh, I, I don't um, – I, I think living in a smaller community, people want to be the face of their brand. Yeah. They, they really do. And yeah. I really don't. Yeah. Like, <laughs> even with consulting, like, I'm already thinking, I'm like, okay, down the road, it's going to be MK Consulting. Yeah, you can and, you know, no one's going to know. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want to be the name of my brand because there's going to be a day where I'm feeling off and I don't mm. want to show up. And I don't want people to correlate that with my business because that has nothing to do with my business. You know, that's why we have hired amazing employees and we have process and we have procedures and we have this great reputation because it doesn't solely rely on me. It relies on a team and a group of people. I am not my brand and I don't want to be my brand. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Bust and Moves, it's very much its own identity. Um, Taylor started Bust and Moves with, he just learned along the way with moving, <laughs> with cleaning. I'd never professionally cleaned a house a yeah. day in my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I cleaned two houses once I owned it and I pulled myself right away because mm. I knew that where I was going to grow my business was going to be outside of my business. Yeah. And I think that sometimes we give ourselves too much credit as business, <laughs> as owner operators, by being like, no one can do it as good as me. <laughs> yeah. I promise you someone can. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And you should go find them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because they right. would love to have that accomplishment of being like, hey, I did this amazing job. I cleaned this house. I moved this house. Um, and then that way you can move the dial forward for your business because no one's going to come in and manage and run your business for yeah. you. They're just when not. I'm going off of that, I remember a couple of years ago, you know, I'd get text messages, phone calls from the movers. They needed this, this, and this. And for your first reaction is like, okay, I'm going to go solve it. I'm going to show up right. to it. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah. But then I sat back and I said, I can't do that. And Marcella, you know, you almost feel lazy. I almost like, <laughs> man, I, I should go out there and help him or I should get there. And Marcella was like worried. But I was like, but if they rely on me, us to moves won't grow yeah you're right so we have to figure it out you know we have to figure out what to do in this scenario so then i'm not a solution to yeah. everything there, there's a lot of danger in making the business about one person yeah. absolutely um, from a marketing and brand perspective as well as like an operational perspective mm -hmm. you know i've heard all kinds of horror stories about somebody who's ready to make the exit from their business but the potential buyer of the new business is like, no, you are the business. Yep. Absolutely. You have to come with it. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. And they're like, well, I never wanted that. Right. Yes. And, um, and then there's, I've heard like some really bad horror stories where like the person's name was the business. Yes. Yes. The business was acquired and now the business is doing things that are maybe unscrupulous with yeah. your name attached yeah. to it. And you're Absolutely. like, oh my gosh, right? I'm represented here, but I'm not happy about how right, it's being represented. Right. Yeah. So, you're 100% right. You have to well, be really careful about that. And starting a business, you should have an exit plan. Are you going to sell it? Mm -hmm. Are you going to pass it down to your kids? What What is the goal? And so you don't want to pass a mess down to your kids. You don't want to no. pass a, a job down to your kids. And if you want to sell your business, a process system business is going to sell for a lot more money That's right. yeah. than a job that just runs off of you. Yeah. Yeah. The, right. the, you know, you were talking about getting to the X goal and how you got there and you can get there in a lot of different ways, but X should be creating a business that's sellable. Even if, yeah. even if that's not your yeah. goal, even if you want your business to stay within your family for years, but you never know what financial, financial hardships they might go to that they might need mm. to sell it. Mm -hmm. So you should always be moving towards creating your business to be a sellable, to sellable business. That's a great point. Because, you know, it's sellable because it's healthy. Yes. And it's right. Yes. So, yeah, that's a great way to think about that. Yeah, and you can just, and you know, someone could come in, buy the business and say, well, what if I don't like 
you know, Bobby in the office. Well, you can fire Bobby, and here's how you could train your <laughs> new Bobby. He's my brother-in-law, you know? but I guess I didn't like him that. either. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so that that's something that we think about whenever we are making a business decision. And 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 this mindset to me, for if someone's hearing that and they're like, that doesn't sound right. I was with you. I was there when Taylor said it sounds lazy. I was the one calling Taylor lazy. That's why he said that. Because I'd be like, I, I said it to his face. Because I grew up, my father, my dad works at a dairy. He's been there forever. He loves it. But he's been at the same position forever. Mm. He's been at the same position forever because he doesn't pull himself out. Because he doesn't want to train people. Because he's just... He's, he's, he thinks that would be harder, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think sometimes it's fascinating. And Taylor's dad's very much the same way. We have very hard working fathers who would work factory jobs, would work overtime, would never complain about it. You know, my dad, he's like, I'm a guest in this country. I'm just mm -hmm. happy to have the opportunities yeah. that I have here. And if that means not having Christmas off for you guys, because I'd be like, you're not getting Christmas off. He's all, do the cows the dairy. Yeah. get Christmas off? Yeah. I said, no. He's like, well, neither do I. And he'd just go off to work. <laughs> yep. I didn't want that. You don't have to have that. That mm -hmm. doesn't have to be your life. But you are going to be making decisions that go against this whole hard worker yeah. mentality. Yeah. You mm -hmm. just are to mm -hmm. get yourself to that other level. Yeah, it's it's interesting. <laughs> There's this guy on TikTok that I think is really funny. It's his channel I think is called Be a Man. I don't know if you've ever oh, seen yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, He's got one that's like, yeah, work uh, 50 years in the same factory job and die. Be a man. Be a man. <laughs> and that's going to yeah. be my dad. I think yeah. my dad is yeah. 44 years at one factory wow. and he's never, he's still a frontline worker because yeah. he doesn't want to move up. He doesn't like getting phone calls. He likes, you know, he's 30 minutes early every day mm -hmm. and he just clocks in, clocks out. And, and there's nothing wrong nothing with that. Wrong no, with it that. really is. Okay. There yeah. absolutely it really is isn't. Okay. Yeah. The only time it's, it's, it's wrong is if you're a business owner and you're stressed out of your mind and people won't stop calling you and you want to close your business mm. because that's that's when the attitude is damaging you know mm. what i mean because like i get it not everyone wants to be a business owner i don't want to be a business owner <laughs> so it's fine but it gets if it's hurting you your family your business you gotta change your mindset yeah, yeah. i do think like you're right somebody can work on a dairy their whole life mm -hmm. and that's great yeah. yeah um but if for whatever reason you decide that's not, not. for you mm -hmm. there is something else mm -hmm. right yeah. there is another path if you mm -hmm. want it yeah Sorry, were you going to say something? No, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, like. Um, so what's next? What does the next year, two years, three years, 10 years look like for you guys? For Bust and Moves, what I see is I call it, well, it's not I call it. It, it is a Les Schwab model. Yeah, okay. And Les Schwab uh, corporate owns everything. Mm -hmm. And then they have branch, more manager, partner. Yeah, they're type. almost like franchises almost a little like bit. Almost like franchises. But not quite. Yeah. Yeah. But corporate still makes decisions. Right. So that's kind of what we want to do. We want to have guys come within. And right now, for sure, I have three guys that I can just 100% <laughs> be like, okay, hey, let's do this with you guys. So that's my vision. That's I don't cool. want to be, I, I, you know, two men in the truck. They're the biggest franchise in the country. I don't want to be that big mm. because you lose quality. Yeah. Okay. Once yeah. you grow too big, you start losing quality. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be just Northwest, Idaho, Utah. Mm -hmm. Washington, Oregon, and use that Les Schwab model. And, and, and Chick-fil-A kind of has the same yeah, model. Yeah, I was just about to mention they, that. Yeah. yeah, they own the building. They own the land. Mm -hmm. And then the the owner-operator kind of ha – he has to work there for three to five years before he can – Apply. Or, 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 yeah, yeah, before they can oh, apply. Sorry, not he. Yeah. Before – before they can apply, they have to work there for three to five years yeah. and kind of show that they are committed to yeah. it. So I'm kind of mixing it up with Chick-fil-A and, and Les Schwab and, and have people. I love it. Yeah. That's and cool. Just, and just so they can see a future with Bustin' Moves because there is a future. Yeah. yeah. And I think right now our biggest focus, I mean, so in Pocatello, we like are like the, the dominant moving company um because don't mess with us no just kidding <laughs> just kidding but um so we also have a location in Idaho Falls we have a location in Twin Falls and we just uh opened Meridian last awesome. summer yeah, so so it's super exciting and I think short term within you know from now to three years it's just dominate Idaho yeah, mm -hmm. dominate Idaho um scale the business and give others 
the opportunity to go in this without the fear that I had when we went in this, you know, because it has been proven. Mm. This is a proven thing. And not only do we have like a product, we have an amazing product. Like we have almost 600 re- five star reviews on Google, you know, and yeah. we, our guys earn that like today it's snowing. Yeah. <laughs> our guys are out there moving. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So they earn it very hard. Our sales team, they follow up with people. They they are aggressive when it comes to getting a sale. And I think right now in, in this economy is something that isn't spoken too much about. I think sometimes as a business operators, we're so tired that if we get a call and you give them your spiel and book it, hang up, and hopefully someone else calls. <laughs> and no, you know, call back, send out fa- uh, flashy emails, you know, send them a text, mm-hmm. you know, or direct them to your website. They're coming across sales and closing them. And what is to come is going to be so much harder than what it has been before. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if your business has been doing so great, it's it can continue to do great. As long as you have like a strong follow-up process. Yeah. So. Our follow-up process, we call it CMET. Okay. So C for call, M for message, voicemail, E for email, T for text. Yeah. And so we just, we have that process to follow through. And and you hear business owners being like, well, I just don't have, I don't have enough uh, time to get them done. That's not a thing where we want to be. We don't want to be, we want to have space, space for everybody. If you are overbooked, first off, you're not growing your business well enough because you there's just money you're leaving money on the table and, and that follow process is huge it's yeah. not um it's not a you're not showing off by saying i'm just so booked you are actually underselling your services and we need to up your prices yeah work mm-hmm. with less customers and make more money at East Idaho Credit Union, we offer startup loans for emerging businesses to help support you in the early stages of growth. This could be for inventory, equipment, or other operating expenses. Almost all businesses qualify. Get started today by visiting us at eastidahocu.org slash start. Federally insured by the NCUA. So I think a lot of times <laughs> business is hard. And a lot of times we want to give ourselves a pat on the back. And so it would be like, well, I'm so overbooked, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And it's not a flex. If you are overbooked, you need to raise your prices. Whenever we were getting close to being overbooked, you know, your first thought is like, oh, I need to hire. Mm. But we all know as business owners that hiring is very expensive. Mm-hmm. And so if you are in a tight spot where you're just like, mm, we're overbooked right now, but we might not be overbooked later, mm. just raise your prices mm-hmm. for that season or that period of time. And we do that. We actually have a calendar and our team knows, you know, if this is a hot days, you know, end of the month. So, summertime, yeah. we raise our prices because it's just a competitive thing to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, anytime you have to scale with people, it's mm-hmm. hard. Yeah. It's just, it's hard on the business. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the flip side is you're, you're increasing your, your net revenue, yeah. ultimately doing it Absolutely. that way too. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Good yeah. advice. Well, and one a customer, you know, repeat customers, we do get a lot of repeat and they'll be like, well, last time you moved us, it was this much. And we always just say, well, you know, our employee retention is fantastic. So these, our employees have gotten better. We have better equipment now, you know, so it, it we're really good at what we do. Mm. So we have to charge accordingly. Our guys are making more money. Mm. And so in order to keep them in, in, within mm-hmm. or able to live their life, we have to give them pay raises. Right. And another way to improve your ROI is to get repeat customers. Yeah. Taylor was looking at a report the other day. Don't. I'm going to talk about reports too, but Taylor was looking at a report the other day and he, he was just, we have a number one lead source, which is Google. Mm-hmm. And then he said, you want to know what our second number one leads or second lead source is? And I was like, what? And he was like, repeat customers. Yeah, sure. Cause then you're not spending that marketing money. Right. They're not clicking on your links again. Right. You're not having to hound them down to get the sell. They're coming back because you gave an amazing experience. So if you can, hone down on whatever problem it might be causing, you know, customer service issues or whatever and fix those so that you can create repeat customers, your ROI is just going to climb. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. That's a really, really good point. Yeah. I, I can't remember the exact number, but, you know, it's something they tell you in business school. It's something like, I think it's like 8X more expensive to acquire a mm-hmm. new customer versus mm-hmm. to, to have repeat business. And um, yeah, that's interesting. So when you tell people like, yeah, we raised the prices, what are you going to do about it? Um, are they typically like, oh, okay. And they just go, they well, go for it or, or like how I many said, fall have, off at that point? I haven't talked to a customer for a while. So 
the team doesn't tell me everything and they kind of say like you know because it, it does put them in an uncomfortable yeah. situation yeah. so that we have to give them the tools to yeah. be like you know like like i was saying that our guys are better than what they were before you mm -hmm. and, and and think about the move you had last time yeah you're calling us back calling clearly us you back, loved so us you mm -hmm. clearly you loved us mm -hmm. and so and, and do you ever call him a crybaby or anything? Like that? <laughs> oh my God. Rick, no, suck kidding. it up. No. Everything's expensive. Just pay for it. <laughs> hey, Close supply chain, you exactly. know. Exactly. That's my favorite excuse yeah, that's for awesome. stuff these days. Yeah. Customer service is not for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, what? I don't hear about your supply chain. Yeah. But I think it's also just really important to equip your team with rebuttals. Yeah. Like we were talking about closing more sales. You're going to get the number of sales that you get in. The goal is to close them, right? Mm -hmm. And also you might be spending tons of money on Facebook, Google ads, whatever, but mm -hmm. if you're not closing those sales, wasted. you're wasting mm -hmm. your money. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we've automated a lot of the things that our um, team does. So, you know, say we have someone who's calling and, you know, they, they, they hear the price and like, well, I got to talk to my husband. Our team has a rebuttal for that. Or we don't mm -hmm. know our close date. Our team has a rebuttal for that. Just make it that much easier so they don't have to overthink you know we know that sales is stressful we our calls our phones are always going off when it comes to sales and so if we can make the process just a little less stressful for our sales team they will close more sales which in turn they make more money mm -hmm. Our movers make more money because we're booking more jobs. And then we make more money just because everyone else is making more money. So if you can simplify things, like similar thing, solve the problem one time, you get off the phone with the customer, you're like, man, that sounded so good, whatever it is that I said, go listen to that call, yeah. create that, make that a script, yeah. and then hand it out to your team. Automation. Well, your, your, your sales will be like, well, I don't want to be salesy. They called you. Right, they right. want to be sold to yeah, or else yeah. they wouldn't have called you. Yeah, so sell right. to them. Yeah, you know? that's right. Yeah. Uh, th somebody smarter than me one time said that you fail to your highest level of preparation, mm -hmm. uh, which just means that whatever you're ready for, that's where you're ultimately mm -hmm. going to fall to. And so if you've done a really good job preparing – going to come out on top a lot of the time yeah. yeah and a lot of times with sales like the whole thing like i don't want to sound salesy uh like any of us google red shoes on your phone and you're going to be hit with red shoes ads on facebook on instagram on youtube like it's everything. it's everything mm -hmm. it's yeah. everywhere but the difference is that you're just like oh i'm seeing a different angle of the red shoe or i'm hearing about the reviews so if you're <laughs> calling and giving them value like Oh, you know, I know that you called the other day. You said you were going to talk to your husband. I also wanted to let you know that we're actually having a sale going on with our packing. And I don't know if I mentioned that before. You're adding value. You're not just like, so are you going to book? So, so are you going to book? So are we doing this? How, how much moving can I put you down for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so you just kind of like, and you're and you're also like, you know, let me send you our, our list so that, you know, you know how to pack and, and how to pack computers or, or whatever. If you're doing the packing on your own or just different things about adding value, you won't feel like you're being so salesy. Don't you selling you're not selling, you're serving. Mm -hmm. If you know that you offer the best product out there, mm -hmm. why would you not want them to go mm -hmm. with you? Mm -hmm. Why would you want them to go with your competitor who sucks at their job? Yeah. You know, right. you don't want them to have a bad experience. You want them to have a great experience. You're not selling, you're serving. Okay, I'll buy it. Okay. Sold. <laughs> 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 <Right. laughs> okay, all right. So I've heard uh -huh. about a calendar. Mm. Mm. Tell us about this calendar. <laughs> it sounds interesting. Have you heard of like the firefighter calendar? <laughs> um, <laughs> Bailey has. Yeah. yeah. You own it. Yeah. Steven. <laughs> it's nothing like that. <laughs> no. So it was so exciting. Uh, last meeting, uh, we were talking about um, kind of the, hey, let's give a good customer experience. I kind of going off, off, off. And then at the end, one of the guys is like, hey, can we do a calendar? I said, yes, let's do a calendar. You know, we, we picked a, two charity foundations to, to, to donate to. And uh, Monday, a couple days ago, yes, we all, Marcella bought three bottles of baby oil. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And we all oiled up. <laughs> yes. And took some pictures. Oh, and we are getting it ready to to sell. We mm -hmm. we really want this to be a big. And the guys got into it. It was like, <laughs> well, and it was hilarious. They were awkward at first, and I just walked in. I took my shirt off, <laughs> and just this. like drenched himself yeah. in oil and in slow motion. So, yeah. so what what's like an example of a shot we might see in this calendar? What was one of them? Okay, so no, I know, I know, a lot of no, bending, flexing, trying to flex. There's one. Where, so if you go to Busted Moves on Instagram, you'll see a lot of our customers hold um, oh. hold up these 
poster boards. It says our name and, and all that jazz, and you can get our info there. So um, picture that and an oily man behind oh it. And that's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was so fun. We had some. We had our team from Boise that came down, and the guy, they look so nice. Like, we're here to take pictures. We're like, strip. No, don't strip. <laughs> but take your shirt off because it's for charity, and how dare you not participate. Yeah. <laughs> and we told him, you have to sell. It. Like, if you think you're sexy, these will sell. Oh, yeah. You know, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. none of us. Like, you guys watch Jumanji with The Rock, and he has that oh, yeah. smoldering. <laughs> We're like, think smoldering so so it it was such a good time our guys were were super good about it they're the most funniest um pictures and poses and mind you it was snowing in pocatello (laughs) and we did some outside so it's gonna be a great time um we will let you guys know when those come out we're gonna have them ready to order here in a few weeks and so they'll they'll be on instagram and they'll be on our website and we'll it's awesome and yeah we'll let dragon slayer know yeah and (laughs) use the dragon slayer podcast promo code and get five dollars off that calendar i love so, it yeah love it. yeah that's great you think they would let you guys sell them upstairs <laughs> probably uh, not no. I doubt it. why but you, can, you can plug it here that's totally fine yeah. <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sell them upstairs uh, no it, it, it's the two foundations that we want to do is the crisis bingham crisis center in in blackfoot mm-hmm. marcella worked um I kind worked for I worked for the McKenzie River or uh, McKenzie um, program, which was for homeless um, students mm. in Blackfoot, and so I got to deal a lot with the crisis center. So they help um, mothers and children who are in you know difficult uh, domestic abuse situations, and they help them get out and get clothing and, and shelter and jobs. And so they do an amazing job. Um, and another one that we're helping with is um, AIDS for Friends, which is in Pocatello, mm. and it's an emergency crisis place that people can go. Um, if, you know, they don't have anywhere to go at the time. So we want to, a big thing that's been so great about starting a business is being able to turn around and serve, yeah. having the time and having the the money to do it and to make a difference in our community. And so that's what we really want to do. And just, you know, put a smile on people's faces. Like Taylor said, have you heard about firefighter colander? <laughs> no, think about that with dad bod and a <laughs> lot of man hair. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, I love that you guys are doing it for a good cause mm-hmm. as well. Um, it's true. You can't really help other people in the world until you better yourself first, mm-hmm. which is one of the reasons that we're so supportive of local businesses because they do so much good in our communities, across all of our communities. And they're one of the greatest forces for good that I see around here, mm-hmm. right? Like government does the best that they can with, you know, how we all know how that goes. Right, but, right. Um, you know, businesses like yours are the ones that really make a difference. And so thank you for doing it. I think yeah. it's really incredible. Um, what what else? What have we not talked about yet? Bailey, what have we not asked? Um, what resources like books? What would you recommend? What has oh, worked yeah. well for you? So we kind of geared ours up mainly towards moving. So we found a moving guru mm. and we went to a seminar and that's where the the passion for processes came. I know we've mentioned it's beating a dead horse on this podcast today, but it is so important. Mm. And so his name was Louis Massaro and we just learned as much as we could about Louis Massaro. And like I said, uh, I feel like I'm the Michael Jordan of small businesses <laughs> and, uh, I would listen to the book Relentless and just, I, I want highly that. recommend it. Highly mm. recommend Relentless. And, uh, that's just the mentality that we went into this with is that yeah. we knew we were doing something big. We were going to change, hopefully, our generational wealth, mm-hmm. our generations, you know. Mm-hmm. I think another book, um, if you're starting your business, like if you're already in it and you're just like, how do I systemize it? How do I grow it? Um, Clockwork mm-hmm. is a really great book. Um, If you started your business and you're dabbling into systems, Systemology is a quick read and it's a great book. And I mean, if you really want to get in it, you can get like certified and oh, wow. you can yeah. get like worksheets and stuff from yeah. their website. So though I those are the two books that I've most recently read. Um, You're audible. They don't even know what you're into. I they mean, don't know. Like it's like murder most. and business, <laughs> romance, and autobiographies. <laughs> um, 
And there's also like the big four, if you want to know about Google and YouTube mm -hmm. and Facebook and, and all of those things right now. Um, if you're a business owner and you're on Instagram and Facebook, start making YouTube shorts. Mm -hmm. YouTube is dumping all their money into that. And then that way you're easier to find on Google because Google that's owns right. YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, they prioritize that content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so things like that, but I, I can't sit still and read a book. I listen to books mm. and, and that's how I get a lot of information. And I yeah, can't read books. Yeah. So she just tells me. <laughs> I just summarize <laughs> it for Taylor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Team. Yeah. I, I, yeah. my audible subscription is maybe like my most valuable thing yes. that I've ever, and I don't know how much it costs, like $10 a right, month or right, something, yeah. but yeah. oh my gosh, I've got gotten so much material mm -hmm. and content through that. And I'm itching for my credits every oh, month I know, when I get I the email, I'm like, yes. Yeah, I feel like a crack addict. I'm like, where's yes. the credit? Where's the credit? I need the credit. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, that's really good advice. You know, one of the things that I think we forget about sometimes is that like the problems that people are having in their businesses, it's not like nobody's ever seen them before, mm -hmm. right? right? People have seen them for years and a lot of them have written it down and a lot of them are on YouTube or on Instagram or like there's so much content out there today. We used to have to go to the library <laughs> yes. to get information, but you have everything, everything. you could ever dream of yeah. uh, like in your hand all yeah. the time. Yeah. You got to use it. You have to use it. And yeah. um, sorry, another one. It's okay. called Culture Code. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's yeah. really good. If you're looking to, if, if you're having a hard time bonding and leading, I, I get that. I, I'm not as talented when it comes to the culture part of it. Taylor does really amazing. And so that's why I read this book and it's called uh, Culture Code. And it just talks about being very honest and open with your team. And I think sometimes as leader positions, we think like, oh, can't tell them I'm having a hard time with this. Yeah. But that will bring you closer. Let yeah. them in. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, I agree. Great advice. That's really yeah. good. Thanks. Um, I like the fun ones. What's an insult you guys have received that you're proud of? <laughs> oh, let me. Okay. Okay, no, you do it. You do it. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you go first. You do it. <laughs> so we had this company call us, or not this company, this customer call us, and then uh, he kind of, we have, we're in business. We got to protect ourselves. And he, he goes, wow, you guys are an implant company from California, aren't you? <laughs> and we're like, like, what does that, that we mean? Have, that we have these things in order, you know, to, to protect us. Yeah. And he did not like he did, that. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's the so one I was funny. thinking yeah. about. He's like, you implants from California. I'm like, we just have steps to take, you know? yeah it was it was cute that's so, probably so that the, was, the biggest insult i that's think that's really funny yeah that's funny i'm often told i'm too good looking that's one that i struggle with a lot but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bailey's, Bailey's like, oh my like, gosh, what is happening? every day, every day with time. this. That's yeah. awesome. You can't ever, like, when people come on the podcast and they compliment him, it's just like, his head just keeps growing. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, yeah, I got complimented on my, on my oh, eyebrows. Oh, oh see, I, I brought it up. One. I saw that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they look good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, we did one last week where they said I had a good face shape for like a cowboy hat oh. perfect that's like, a really good sales tactic to yeah. buy oh, I know. <gasps> they, 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 they the were the hats. cowboy they hat cowboy people's hats. yes we i made saw custom that. cowboy hats wow, and then i so spent good. a lot of money on Dang. one of theirs so you they look got me. really good sitting on your couch as people are moving furniture yeah. around you <laughs> <laughs> i don't know next time i move you guys are my first yeah. call uh, yeah. I and, and so. it'll be your last call that's hey i like that are you guys on tiktok Oh my gosh. So we, dance we, around with it. we yeah. are, but it's not like, it's not like this. It's just like <laughs> moving stuff, you know, like, but our guys, again, I'm like the in Michael baby Jordan, oil though, right? And baby oil. Yeah. And baby I'm oil. I'm like the Michael Jordan of small businesses. And so like, I don't like that. Have fun. It's weird. I don't I'm like, just like no, fun. let's get down to business. Let's do good work. Yeah. And then we'll have fun. But it's so but funny because when you can do both, you yeah. can't yeah. do yeah. both. Our guys have been like, hey, we should do a TikTok video. And it's so cute because they'll bring up videos. They'll do like Savage Love. And I'm all, yeah, that one's from so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was the comment? Not when even When we were trending. doing the calendar oh. shoots, um, this kid, he or this guy, he just could not get Me. sexy. <laughs> and, and, get and, sexy already. And one of the guys goes, hey, just pretend you're doing one of your Snapchats. <laughs> They have a very good time. I bet if we made one of them a TikTok ambassador, yeah, we'd have a lot of TikTok. Because like moving terminology, it can get a little, uh, little Interesting. risque. Oh, yeah. is that right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, I um, 
uh, maybe you should tell us just a little bit about that. Uh, if maybe I, not too maybe much. Maybe if I say it, it won't sound okay. as well. <laughs> Where do you want me to put this load? Okay. <laughs> All right. Where can I place this package? Uh-huh. Fair. Do you want this wrapped up? <laughs> when we ha- we have we have shoulder straps. We're like, hey, who's gonna strap on with me? And stuff. Just show the you know, others. Oh gosh, I need two men on this right here, right now. Two men on this one. Yeah. <laughs> two man job. Put your back into it. Yeah. So the guys do have a good time. They yeah. they really have a fun time they with do. that. I think TikTok. We follow this moving company out of Kansas oh. City, and they they're awful. I mean, not awful. no, they're great. They're you guys great. are great. They're great with their content. Wildly yeah, it, it, inappropriate. Like, wildly. Inappropriate. Oh really? Yeah. And they get so much business because of it. Well, you know, yes. they're having fun. Yeah. They're, they're you know, not... there's a certain like really potent marketing tactic yes. there that's right. that's at play. Some people recognize it, and some people don't, mm-hmm. but. Um, you have to like figure out how to talk to your audience. Right. Yes. And, you know, there's a company, there's a company called, um, oh, what are they called? Big ass fans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. At the gym. Yeah. Right. yeah. You see them all around. The They've yeah. done very, very well. I, I was walking in like a, um, like a Lowe's or something in Amarillo, Texas. And, and they had the guy from that company was there and he was getting chewed out by this old oh, lady no. for having such a vulgar right. name. Right. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. um, and he's like, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. We're not for you. Right, right. right. But the people who like get it, they really get it. Yes. And they're like diehard customers. And yeah. so I'm sure they're employing the same kind of oh, tactic, right? They're really exactly. trying to get on a specific right, type of person. Right. Yeah. When we even had a customer call, she's like, I'm not looking to book movers, but I saw your truck and it made me really happy. And I just wanted mm. to call and tell you that. Yeah. So <laughs> I love we, that. we do have fun. Like our colors are bright. I, I'm wearing a darker navy mm-hmm. shirt, but our colors are bright orange, bright blue. They have fun. Mm-hmm. Um, well, my- and our, our, so it's bust and moves, bust and ours to save yours, you know? So when we <laughs> first started, Taylor was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's still fun. Now he's Michael Jordan. Now, now he's fun Michael anymore. Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. What else, Bailey? What else we missed? Was there anything we didn't ask yeah. you I that think, you want to? I think we covered everything. I really do. Is there anything you want to chat about, say? I, I'm good to keep talking. <laughs> okay. Okay. Like, I'll just hang out here and bring <laughs> yeah. lunch. Yeah. They, are they booking jobs right now? They're good doing to yeah. great. They're doing moves. They're, we're yeah. good to go. Like, lazy as always. Think, yeah, lazy. Right? Just bumming around. <laughs> lazy. <laughs> well, that's to, to talk about that. Okay, sure. Um, because you do feel lazy when you're not there. Yeah. You, you mm-hmm. kind of feel lazy. And then we just brought in a new uh, employee back in June or July. And he he worked for a couple of weeks. And he's like, hey, I'm actually going to put in my two weeks. I'm going to go work for this company. It wasn't a moving company, but he's like, it, it lines up more with my my degree that I want to do. And so we took him to lunch because he, he had a lot of promise. And we're like, hey, this is the vision that we have for you. And I was like, after today, you're probably not going to see me a lot. Mm. you know we, i'm not around a, a lot with everybody but he's like but you know what i see i see what you're doing because mm-hmm. i can see the growth so yes i do i'm not at the shop every day but the guys know because we wouldn't be growing without me doing mm-hmm. what i what i do yeah right. exactly and i love doing what and, i do and, and yeah. i think it's hard because you don't see this in every job in it but i think it's like your responsibility as an owner to give your employees purpose your team purpose and let them see every time they cross the finish line we had a very long move Mm. a couple of weeks ago we're all stressed out because we can see where the guys are at and how long the moves this move took a total of 16 hours including and we we knew what the bill was going to be at the end of it and it was going to be a complete shock Mm. you know and so at the end of it the customer was more than happy to pay for it, mm. tip the guys. And then the next day, you know, we always go back because we want to do better. What did we miss here to make it a 16 hour day? Because we never want mm-hmm. our guys to work 16 hours. And Chayden, he said, this was like the funnest move we've yeah. ever done. Oh. He's like, done. if you're stressed out, call me. You'll hear people in the background laughing, you know? And so <laughs> it, that was good to know because yeah. me, we're just sitting there worried. Connor, yeah. our ops manager was worried. Marcel yeah. was worried. Yeah. And we're about, I mean, we're laying in bed because it's 9 30, 10 o'clock <laughs> at night. Yeah. And we're like, why are they still out? Why, why are, are they, they still, still out? Why are they still out? <laughs> Yeah. So, it, but, but I, I think, I think it's because they saw how happy they made that sweet customer. Mm-hmm. They saw that they accomplished their goal and the team saw those things. Therefore, they felt accomplished that day yeah. and it made them feel good about their job. 
Yeah. And and I think sometimes as as a business owner, there's a lot of times that our our, our employees aren't going to do what we want, and and it's important to teach them. But it's more important to celebrate them so big when they do get yeah. those wins instead of being like, well, about time, yeah. you know. <laughs> so so I think that that's another thing that's really important. You can't always be the bad guy at work. You mm. have to be the cheerleader sometimes yeah. too. Well, that's a common thing. You ask the movers, hey, what's your favorite thing about the job? And a lot of them is helping the customers. Mm-hmm. They feel like even though they're getting paid, they're serving the customer. Mm-hmm. And so it, they love to make smiles. Because a lot of the times these are, like for example, us, I ha- we have four kids. If we had to move right now, it'd be so stressful. Right. You know, Taylor's working, I'm working, or, you know, it's an elderly couple or it's a divorce situation or it's a death in the family. They are very stressful moments in people's lives. And if you feel like you're going into that situation, you're lessening the burden. Oh, geez. You know, mm-hmm. that's such a sense of accomplishment. So I think you can find that in, in a lot of aspects of, of small businesses. Yeah. 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 And I love being in tune with our business. You got to kind of, like Marcelo said, it's a living creature. You got to yeah. be in tune. And I was, um, every now and then, uh, if I don't see five star reviews coming in or different things, not bad reviews, just no reviews, like what are we not doing mm-hmm. to motivate them to go mm-hmm. review us? And then we had a team meeting. We were kind of talking about that. And I said, hey, from here on out, like we are only striving for A. Mm-hmm. I took the Henry Ford model and I gave everyone ginormous raises mm-hmm. and I was scared. We were all scared. <laughs> we were all scared. And I, and, and I, but then I laid out the expectations. Yeah. And the expectation is to wear your uniform, mm-hmm. khakis, polos, or bust and moves attire. Mm-hmm. And because uh, I said, from the moment that they see you, before they even knock on the door, they're looking at you. Yeah. And if you look like truck's grungy, you're grungy, they're going to be worried. Mm -hmm. And the next day, a review came in from the moment they showed up, we were relieved. Mm. And so I'm like, okay. 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 And and it it comes with good, like things like that. And we did lose somebody, you know what I mean? Mm. Because they just couldn't step up to where it was. And so I think our mentality changed of like, instead of giving people like, oh, you messed up. It's okay. Oh, you messed up. It's okay. No, let's up the pay and let's raise the expectations. So that way they're like, of course I have to do X, Y, and Z. Look at what I'm getting paid. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and our guys, we want them to make, (laughs) I made a post the other day. I think in business you hear about this a lot. I'm not Kumbaya. I'm, I've, I picked up on the Michael Jordan stuff and I'm (laughs) Scotty Pippen over here now. And, uh, they talk about how like there's an, there's enough pie to go around. No, there's not. (laughs) Give me all the pie. I want the pie. Why are you eating my pie? I don't want to share pie. And I think, and the reason why I don't want to share pie and know there's not enough pie going around is because I want my employees to make the most money. I want to grow my company so I can move them up into positions. I want to have opportunities to serve my community. I don't want to share my pie because Hmm. of those reasons. And I think that that's kind of what's happened in Pocatello and that's what we're hoping to do in Idaho mm. is just we want our guys to succeed. We want them to take vacations. We want them to buy ginormous houses. We want them to continue buying brand new cars. Whenever someone gets a brand new car, we're like, hey, <laughs> and we see it on the lot. And it's just amazing to be like, we created this machine that gives people this opportunity and we don't want to stop. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're, you're still sharing the pie. You're just doing it differently. Yeah. You're sharing it with your employees right. and yes. people who work there. And our pie I, is the best pie. It's the best the pie. The best tasting yeah. pie. <laughs> I don't know. That, I was yeah. like, is that mean to say? <laughs> this side of the Mason-Dixon gap. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. But just, yeah. Love it. Um, gosh, I had a question. I've, I've forgotten it now. I've I gotten to got pie on the mind now yeah. shoot Apple pie. Pie. i hear that, that that means you're in the moment <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> you're in the moment yeah. and that means that you're the happiest too when you're I in the moment i'm so happy yeah, yeah. <laughs> knew it <Yeah. laughs> um, oh oh here it is okay so y- you talked about um you know you raise the standard mm-hmm. you raise the pay with it mm-hmm. you lost somebody mm-hmm. tell me how you feel about that particular experience losing that person that was hard because he he he'd been with us since 2019, I think mm-hmm. May of 2019, um, and he, and he he was a great as um, a crew member. I, we call him crew members. If you're yeah. not leading the job, you're a crew member. He was great, great coworker, worked hard. But anytime that we put him in a leadership position, something would happen, mm-hmm. and and so we he was. Uh, I kind of had a. a, a it's like, hey, we can't do this anymore. Our expectations are A plus movers, mm-hmm. and you're not being an A plus mover. So we need to do this. And he texted me later and just said, I 
I can't handle that. I can't, Mm -hmm. I can't handle being worried about losing my job. And I kind of disagree with that. I think we should all have a little bit of a fear of yeah. losing our job. Yeah. Sure. You know, yeah. like you should, if I don't perform, I might lose my job. Mm-hmm. And so it, it was a hard, it, I hated seeing him go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause he, yeah, I hated seeing him go. Um, but knowing the answer and okay, well, you know, I used to work at Costco and it's real hard to get fired from Costco. <laughs> But people there are kind of lazy because mm. they know that, mm. you know, so you should have a little bit of a fear. You don't want to create this like very authoritative, authoritative yeah, yeah. You know, but dictatorship. Th- because if we mess up, we're messing up with people's things. Mm. We're not just messing up. And yeah. that and that's like because I always tell the guys like this might look like a wood table to you, but so-and-so's great grandfather could have carved this out of the tree from their backyard. And so like, we got to carry everything with that weight, knowing Mm -hmm. that that could be the most special thing. Very unfortunate event happened. This kind of what changed my mind is, uh, one of our movers, they carried a dresser and they're putting it in the truck and he had to get it into kind of a tight spot. And you know how you use your leg to Mm kind of, kind of push it a little bit. Well, his, his knee went through it. And so he talked to the customer, oh, you know, I'm so sorry. And she just started bawling. She, oh, oh no. no, what happened? You know, and he, and, and, uh, it was her, she lost her son and that was his dresser, you know, and it looked like a dresser to him. He felt awful. Like he, Carlos is such an amazing, he felt, he felt so bad, but that was like, we don't know what we're moving. You know, we, right. so we should have a little bit of a fear that if we mess up because we're not moving people, we're moving their lives. Yeah. Right? We're moving their yeah. lives, not just their, their things. And, and when, when we lost that one employee, Taylor, like Taylor said, he's not in the shop every day. He doesn't know every single detail, but we run our business based off of reports. Mm-hmm. And so every month we'd get a report and we would see damage claims, this number. Oh. That. And so that's how Taylor was able to know, oh, this is the problem. This is what's going on. And so when this person left, it was hard to see him go. But at the same time, I appreciate that he himself was just like, I can't handle this yeah. because he understood the magnitude. Mm-hmm. And he also understood the, the, the damage of breaking somebody's things, of somebody having a bad experience. We always tell the guys, listen, if you show up and you go to a job and you have a bad attitude, that person tells 10 of their friends mm those 10 of their friends are not going to hire your buddies that work for us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so it, 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 we make them aware that it is a domino effect of everything you do on the job. And I think that helps them to see the magnitude of every action and interaction that they have. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, sometimes, well, it's always difficult to like separate from an employee, especially if they've mm-hmm. been around for a while, you have like a personal relationship with them. That stuff's always difficult. Um, but you know, it's come, become more apparent to me over the years that if you allow somebody to just continue to fail, really, you're not doing them any favors. Right. Yeah. You're really not, right? Like everybody deserves to work at a place where they can go and be a star. Mm-hmm. And, and, and if, you know, this isn't that place, that's okay. Yeah. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. You should take the opportunity to go find the place where you can be right. great. Absolutely. When he yeah. said something to me, and it was kind of eye opening, and I knew it. But he said, "Well, if there was this many problems, why didn't you say anything to me?" Mm. And I'm like, "I know. Yeah. That's why I'm talking to you now." Yeah. You know. And so, yeah. you do have to run things by reports and numbers, and that's how our raises are going to go from here on. Because I'd be like, "Oh, you guys worked a 16 hour day. Here's another dollar raise." You know. Yeah. It was just kind of <laughs> off of uh, how I felt. Yeah. But yeah, now yeah. we get to look. Okay, you were late three times in a month. You didn't wear your uniform. You might not get a raise. Mm. Right? You know. So it's easier to show them yeah instead, instead of, of oh i'm like, feeling like yeah. this yeah Here's something. exactly yeah. and then yeah. the other side too you know we have guys who if you go look at our reviews they mention names they may mention juan carlos chaden mm. andrew mike and i'm sorry if i'm missing any ernesto you know emilio a boot avoid <laughs> avoid yeah, people call. always get their name wrong but <laughs> um, they call them avoid they, yeah avoid because <laughs> like when you put a boot it's a b o oh it just autocorrect it. Auto-correct auto-correct it. Avoid. So everyone, oh my goodness everyone calls them avoid <laughs> yes so, so, but we know who you are, Abud. But um, we can, if they come to us or we go to them, we have proof on either side. You know, yeah. you've been doing amazing. You've been, you know, wanting to come in when we ask you. You're always on time. You're always prepared. Yes, you deserve a raise. Or like, oh, maybe mm-hmm. let's revisit and let's coach you on these things, mm-hmm. you know, and let's get you to a raise here in three months, six months, whatever that looks like. Yeah. So then it's on them. It's not Taylor being a jerk or anything right. like that. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, I, 
I did do that. And yeah. it takes the feeling out of it because yeah. I feel like so many times as employers, we feel like the bad guy. I had to fire mm. someone. I, you know, I couldn't give someone a raise or I moved someone up into a position. But if you have metrics, right, how you, metrics, like how you measure how well someone is doing, it's their actions that are affecting this. Not just like, oh, yeah, you seem really nice. Let's give you a raise, you know, or I don't know. So I think that's also really important. It takes the feelings out of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the the big struggles that a lot of businesses have is, um, it's funny. I, I worked for this guy one time and he, by all accounts, he was a brilliant man. Um, he did a couple things I wasn't a, a huge fan of, mm -hmm. but, uh, I remember one time somebody questioning him about a decision that he had made and we were very successful and I remember he kind of came down on him. He said, Hey, I've built this whole thing on my intuition. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you got to trust me on this. Mm. And he had the track record to maybe right. make that an appropriate right. statement, although I probably wouldn't have said right, it. It's right. kind of rude, but yeah. um, had he instead answered that question as, well, here's why this, <laughs> this, yeah. this, and yeah. this, um, we could have all, instead of when he walked away, what we did was say, man, what a jerk. Right. Yeah. We could have all said that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Right. Let's get behind that. Yeah. Well, and that's we, this last meeting we had. I said, you know, these changes might be a little different for you guys, but I just is like, I have to ensure that Bus and Moves is going to be here for the next 40, 50, you know, forever. Um, this is my this is my career, this is my livelihood. Yeah. And we had three guys say, mine too. Oh, so that's I was cool. like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. because we do make changes, and and yeah. guys who are only here for a little bit might not understand them but there is a big picture i wouldn't address it like that yeah. and say <laughs> yeah you know yeah. hey shut up hey, hey shut up i know yeah. better <laughs> yeah yeah but uh yeah we just kind of had a little and you have to be flexible and i think sometimes even taylor has a hard time with this like something comes up and we have to change it and 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 sometimes it's hard to roll out changes constantly with employees but to grow to grow, you have to change and you have to adapt. And and your employees, when we hire employees, we're like, how flexible are you with your mindset, with how mm. you think, you know, like, are you willing, you know, to pivot like on a dime? And, you know, if they say no, then you might not be the right fit for us, you know, because this is Bobby, This is Bobby. you know, <laughs> Bobby's busted moves and Bobby likes it to change it up. Yeah. And, um, but it's something that we're always working on. And, and, and I think also like as a startup, letting our employees know that they are part of this Journey. dream mm -hmm. you know of this thing and and what they do influences it gives them purpose yeah well because i'll say that they're like, oh taylor you know we're, we're helping you build your dream i said you're getting paid yeah like, you're you're yeah. you're doing well yeah. you know you're so part of the dream part of it, it this yeah. is us yeah. we are the dream team yeah. we are the dream team there we go <laughs> time michael jordan is there, That's you right. there you go there you go okay i want to ask the big question now yes. okay what is your message to the world mm. Mm. I, my message would be, you don't always have to love what you do. You don't always have to find something that you're passionate about. You know, I, I kind of was passionate about moving kind of, but not, you know, so I don't think you have to do what your passion is. You just have to go mm -hmm. just do, just take that step forward in whatever it is. And if it is, you want to be a business owner, you can do something that someone else has already done. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just be shinier, be better, mm -hmm. you know, do something different, offer, offer a different service. So picking back off of what Taylor said, um, there's this quote, I don't know where it came from, maybe my brain, but it says, <laughs> <laughs> move confidently in uncertainty. Mm -hmm. it, it, so many times you will see people who you think just have it all together. I have conversations with people who are like, oh my gosh, you're doing this and this. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> just move confident and, and you will find your purpose. Do what you know is right and you will find your purpose. You, you will find your path. You will find where you're meant to be. Just don't stop moving. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're not moving, if you're not growing, you're dying. And I firmly believe in that. And just move confidently in uncertainty. And everybody's happiness looks different. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad, my dad's pretty happy. Mm -hmm. My dad's happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They work the same job. So everyone, so don't compare yourself and, and, and try to make someone else's dream, your dream, find what you find your dream and, and go with it and be happy. Go be the Michael Jordan of whatever your yeah. dreams are. But then I'm going to come after you. So. <laughs> and eat your pie. <laughs> yeah. No. And that's, you know, I, when you start a business, everyone's like, okay, well, what's next? You know, well, I want to master moving, but 
I've been thinking about starting other businesses and I just don't know if I have the energy to do what, it what, what it takes to mm. start a business again. Cause it does, it takes a lot of time and effort and I just don't know if I'm willing to go back there for that. <laughs> so find what, just do it and do it once and go after yeah. it. I love it. Guys, thank you so much oh for joining gosh, us thank today. Thank you guys. Yeah. Great advice. Um, great insights. I never thought that a moving business would be as interesting as mm -hmm. it actually is. Yeah. Uh, really, really great. Um, and thank you for joining us on the Dragon Slayer podcast by East Idaho Credit Union. We'll see you next time. Woo! Man, you stop hitting the table. Oh my gosh! Dude. I didn't I'm think so you were doing sorry. that okay, bad. Okay. I, I mean, right? No. I don't know, Andrew. What do you think? Because she's the one really listening for stuff. Every time yeah. his hands reach here, I'm all. I know, and I don't know where. <laughs> well, I, so what, because I'm the same way, I yeah. just go right here it's and I don't move them. Yeah. yeah, and I just stay right here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do my best good. anyway. Yeah. Well, and then I see you like this. I know. I'm trying, you're like, to trying to contain your hands. On your lap. <laughs> yeah. What do I do with my no. hands? <laughs> <laughs> That's all. It's so awkward. <laughs>